My name's Leanne Croucher and I'm originally from Middlesbrough and now I live in Yarm with my husband and three kids. My dad left when I was about two months old. My mum, she met another English man. She had two kids with him and then he left. Then she met somebody else and had an, a, another baby. Um, and he's brought me up for the past 20 years as his own. So to me, he's my, like he's my role model as a father. Growing up as a child without my real dad, my brothers and sisters going to their dads for weekends, you know, my, other, my youngest sister having her dad there 24 seven, you know, it always felt like there was a part missing because I didn't really fit in because my dad, he left because he likes alcohol and parties. Um, he's been in and out of my life um, over the 27 years. But when I reached 21 and he came drunk and just wanted to take me to pubs and stuff, I stopped contact with him. I didn't want to know him anymore. My stepdad, John, he's been there for me through everything. You know, like taking me for shoes, taking me shopping, you know, if ever I had any problems, like in school, I could always go to him. You know, he'd always try his best to keep me close to him. Maybe he felt sorry for me or, but yeah, he's even still now, him and my mum broke up about two years ago. He still comes sees me, he still sees my kids as his grandkids. You know, he's never cut contact with us, even though he's not with my mum anymore. For my parents, they're non-believers. They don't believe in anything. I think they just believe in the Big Bang. So religion wasn't mentioned ever when we were growing up. I didn't even know that Muslims didn't eat pork until I met my husband, you know. Um, so I went to a non-religious school and I was just the normal, wild, very wild child. Maybe because I didn't have my real dad, maybe that's why I was so wild. I don't know. None of it ever got mentioned, like no religion whatsoever ever got mentioned. I didn't mix with religious kids. We didn't know religious people. So yeah, it just wasn't something that was ever talked about from till I met my husband. Christmas to us was just a nice Christmas tree, nice decorations, flashy lights, loads of presents, loads of food, alcohol. That's all Christmas was to us. And Easter was just chocolate, bunnies, <laughs> Easter eggs, nothing religious, never. I left school in my last year, didn't do any GCSEs, nothing. My mum was just like, if you don't want to go to school today, get your uniform on, walk halfway to school when your dad's gone to work, come home. You know, she wasn't really forcing school on me. When it was due to sit my exams, she took me for, like, my eyebrow pierced, my tongue pierced. You know, she wasn't... She wasn't really forcing education on us whatsoever. I think I just put it down to the fact that I never had my real dad there. So I went searching for him. And, you know, when I found him, it was just like, that's not it, you know. Even with him in my life, it, to be honest, it made it worse. Because he'd want to come down from Scunthorpe and just take me pubs. If we want to go out for something to eat, it'd be in a pub. You know, every time it'd just be him drinking, and that's the only thing that he wanted to do with me. Like, he didn't want to take me pictures or, you know, out for nice meals. It had to be somewhere in a pub where he could watch football and have a beer. You know, it wasn't... So I just... I cut from him. Before I met my husband, I used to question, you know, like, 
Why are people here? Why do animals exist? What are the trees all about? You know, how did this world become what it is today? You know, people kind of just appeared on the earth. There must be a reason. But I'd never ask anybody because religion wasn't, you know, talked about. Nobody, we didn't know anything about it, like totally dumb towards religion. So me going to my mum and saying that to her, I didn't feel comfortable, you know, like I could ask her something like that. So when I met Mohammed when I was nearly 20, um, and we started talking and, you know, he'd tell us about religion and about the prophets and about, you know, what's haram, what's halal. I got interested in it um, to the point where we ended up getting married. <laughs> like, uh, everything he was telling me because um, it was new to me and it was like laws, like you don't live chaos. You know, you've got rules, set rules, you know, that you can that you can live by, by choice, not like just all over the place. So I was quite interested, you know, in what he had to say. And his, when I met his mum, you know, and we lived with his mum for a while, and she really, you know, educated me, my oldest daughter, um, and his cousins, Fatima and Zainab. I travelled down to London to see them. I think seeing them wearing the hijab made it more easier and more comfortable for me to put the hijab on. Because they're more my age. So seeing, you know, young girls you know, that I can sit and talk to, and they're just like normal people. Like, before if I see someone with a hijab on, it's like scary, you know, because I didn't know anything. But when I sit and talk with Fatima Zainab, it's like, they're just normal people, you know. Can have a normal conversation with them, can ask them anything and they'll be honest. It's like I found it interesting, what he was telling me. So, and the way his family were living. You know, when we lived with his mum for a while, um, I seen the way his family were living, you know, everyone was coming around for tea, everything was nice and clean. I just liked the way of life in that house around a Muslim family. I liked the way, you know, things were different to the way I got brought up. It was nice, so I looked into it, asked him questions, asked his mum questions, I texted his cousins, I like to, you know, and I'm just talking and I'm asking questions, I'm finding out new things, and that's why I converted. We went to the mosque in Farnaby on Westbury Street. I was so nervous, a bit like I am now. <laughs> and I was saying that the sheikh was telling me in Arabic, and I was trying to pronounce it back in Arabic, and his uncle's video recording it, and oh, it was probably the best and worst day of my life, to be honest. <laughs> I was just so nervous and scared and I was saying it all wrong. But it didn't matter because they didn't care, really. They didn't look at me and say, you know what, you don't even know it, so why should we even let you into our religion, you know? I just, they were just so nice, even though I was getting it all wrong. I was saying oven about 20 times and he was trying to correct me and I just kept saying oven because I didn't know what he was saying. <laughs> it was amazing. I wasn't expecting it. His mum came all the way back from Egypt to be in the mosque when we got married. You know, his uncle Anwar and his wife Vicky and Essan and all of his family were just so welcoming. And then when I went to London to meet, you know, the rest of the family, it was amazing. I loved it. They were just... It was like, um, it was like I'd known them forever, you know. It was easy to be comfortable around them. It was, yeah, it was nice. It was probably better than meeting an English person's family, to be honest. <laughs> you know, none of my family agree to me being a Muslim. They hate the fact that I'm bringing my kids up as Muslims, but they'll be nice just to keep the peace. So, and even my own family can't, you know, pull me away. They've tried many times. Like me and my husband, we fall out. And, oh, leave him, he's no good for you. And, 
you know, they've tried loads of times to get me to leave him, take the kids and just bring them up to be non-believers, but I don't want the life that I had for my kids. I must have been about four years later, maybe longer. Um, I think living with his mum, spending time with Yasmin and, you know, his, his, the girls in his family that are younger, more my age, who wear the hijab, you know, going to their weddings and meeting other women my age who wear the hijab, you know, seeing the life that they live as a Muslim, as a person, and wearing the hijab, you know, it's not really... I'm not sure, like, seeing them made it more comfortable for me to wear the hijab. Um, so I started looking into it more, YouTube, books, asking questions to his mum, and then I just decided, you know what, it's not going to hurt giving it a go. So I bought some hijabs, and even before I wore the hijab, my daughter, she used to wear the hijab for, for school. We used to put a little tiny hijab on her and send her to nursery. You know, she'd come home and she would be just the same person that I sent. So she's not getting any confrontation from it, you know, so if she can do it, why can't I do it? If she's strong enough to wear it and she's only a little tiny baby, I'm a grown person, I know the religion, you know, I've studied it, I've asked questions, why aren't I strong enough? So I just give it a go. I didn't really um, speak to him about it because me wearing the hijab wasn't really a topic at that time for him to be asking me. Um, so I ordered some online with Yasmin, his cousin, um, and they came through the post and I just put it on and I walked. We went to get into the car and he was like, my God, I'm so proud of you, you look so beautiful, you know, I love you so much, you know, all that soppy stuff. <laughs> you know, when I was walking down the street, like in the town shopping with my hijab on, people giving me funny looks, I just felt so powerful. Like, I just look at them and I just smile. Like, you know, they're giving me funny looks, but it doesn't bother me, it makes me feel, like, stronger, like, you know what, in your face, it's, it's my head. I'll put what I want on it, and if you don't like it, don't look at me. You know, there's other people around, look at them. And it just makes me smile, to be honest. I don't think Islam oppresses women by them covering, because not all women are forced to cover. You know, people, the women, they study it. They study the past, they study the prophet, they study his family, and they decide themselves to wear it. You know, it's not like you meet a Muslim man and the next day he's making you wear a headscarf because no other human being can make a human being do something that they do not want to do. It's not physically possible. You know, if, if my heart's set on not wearing the hijab, there's nothing my husband can do to make me wear it, so I'm not oppressed as a woman. See, when I first met him, I used to watch um, Peace TV, you know, and... Then we got, um, you know, the big satellite installed and I found Achel Bay TV and I was between both of them, like, you know, for a bit I'll watch Peace TV um, and then for a little bit I'll watch Achel Bay TV and to be honest, me, myself, as a person, I was more drawn to Achel Bay TV, you know, the different stories that were getting told. Um, on the show, you know, the, the fact that there's more women on there than what these on Peace TV made it more comfortable for me to watch as a person. And that's why I think, um, I've never really looked into Sonny because I'm not really interested in looking into it because that TV show, it bored me. I'm all for the TV, me. <laughs> you know, I watch um, Zara Alawi all the time. I don't know, she she seems to me like more of a person that, even though she's on the TV, you can click with her, you know.